I'm delighted that we get an opportunity to talk about Sleep Revolution. So can we start with how did you come to write the book? Was there a, an aha moment? So I'm delighted to, and there was an aha moment. Uh, it, it was a real wake-up call nine years ago when I collapsed from sleep deprivation and burnout. I hit my head on the way down on my desk. I broke my cheekbone. And as I came to, I had to ask myself the question, is this what success looks like? And how am I really living my life? And that's what started me doing research around burnout and sleep deprivation and recognizing that um, the casualties in our culture are proliferating uh, among children who start school too early, whose circadian rhythms are different than ours, and therefore expecting them to be fully functioning at right. 7 a.m. is like expecting me and you to be fully functioning at 4 a.m. Adolescents, the same problem. College students, you know, as you know, there is an epidemic of mental health issues in colleges, and if you scratch the surface of 70 to 80 percent of them, you find sleep deprivation. So it's really, it's an epidemic and it's endemic. I think it's almost part of our culture that somehow not sleeping is good and sleeping means you're lazy. So I'm glad you wrote about sleep because it also affects two things that you and I are very interested in, which is mental health disorders in children. And we know that abnormal sleep patterns um, occur when you have ADHD, you have fitful and you're moving around too much and if you have depression you might sleep too little and bipolar too much. And we definitely recognize in your book you talk about how preventative sleep can be. So particularly for kids with mental health disorders, we know that if they can sleep and get good sleep, then they're less likely to be stressed or have academic failure, which are risk factors for drug and alcohol abuse. So, you know, what can parents do? And I think this is what everyone wants to know. What are the tips, what are the things that parents can do to help children get good sleep or good sleep hygiene? Right, well, the first and most important thing is to recognize how important sleep is. Because, um, as you said, Ever since the Industrial Revolution, <clears throat> and even more after the Digital Revolution, we have really come to devalue sleep. We think it's something that we can sacrifice on the altar of success or achievement. So I would love parents to educate themselves about the science of sleep. That's why in the Sleep Revolution, I have an entire section dedicated to the latest scientific findings and 50 pages of scientific endnotes that make it very clear that sleep is not negotiable. When they believe that, they are also going to model that behavior. Because right now, the behavior that parents are modeling, right. whatever they may be telling their children, is that if they're going to be successful, they're going to sacrifice sleep. So let's talk about the detrimental effects of sleep deprivation on a child. So on learning, for instance, or their mood, their behavior, um, even their socializing. What you know, th there are some very negative effects. Absolutely. Well, all the recent scientific findings show that um, the impact of se sleep deprivation is the same as being drunk. You know, the cognitive impairment right. is identical to drinking. So, you know, imagine how parents would feel if they saw their child having a couple of shots there's of there's vodka in the morning. But the, uh, but the impact is the same. And uh, so also, the impact on their mood. I mean, we know anecdotally from ourselves, we know that when we're sleep deprived, we are more cranky, more moody, more likely to be affected by bad things happening. And everybody's life is filled with obstacles and setbacks, whatever age right. you are. So if you're sleep deprived, you're going to overreact. You're going to overstress about them. And when you're a child or an adolescent, you obviously I don't need to tell you that, right. you, you don't have yet all the tools that we have to navigate your emotions. When people become familiar with the science, as we begin to shift the culture, it will be very easy to change their habits. And the most important change in habits has to be with creating a transition to sleep. And every parent watching knows that uh, when, when you have a baby or a very young child, right. you don't just drop it in bed. Right. You know, you give it a bath, you sing it a lullaby, you put it in his PJs, etc., etc. Well, we need to create similar 
rituals right. for our children and for ourselves. Well, I think the whole idea of sleep hygiene, where we all know what hygiene is, that we're supposed to brush our teeth or take a shower in the morning, but I don't know if most people would understand what you're talking about as sleep hygiene, what the, th the rituals that you do to make sleep transition and also uh, en enhance the chances of good sleep. Exactly, like having a shower before you go to sleep, which um, immediately kind of helps you wash away the day. Um, reading physical books in bed right. that have nothing to do with work, that are not going to stimulate you. Even kind of having special t-shirts if you don't want to have PJs or mm -hmm. night dresses. Um, that the nightwear, are, something the nightwear, that's different than exactly, daywear. Exactly, right? that you are not going to wear to the gym. All these things are important messages to our brain. I think the more they know about all these things, Absolutely. they I don't think we should underestimate how information can change Awareness, people's behavior. Yes. Totally. We're at the same moment now that we were with smoking. Remember, the science was in, we knew tobacco was killing us. And we kept smoking. But right. not only did we keep smoking, but you go back to the 60s and you had doctors in right. white coats um, advertising cigarettes, saying things like, uh, I smoke mentals because they refresh my throat. So we are at a similar moment. The science is in, but people are still wearing their sleep deprivation as a badge of honor. So but the culture is shifting. So I'm very glad you're going to lead this revolution because I'm, I'm not also leading. I'm no, only no, no, helping okay. accelerate. Well, okay. I'm optimistic that uh, we can tackle uh, the sleep deprivation problem also. And Absolutely. I'm, thank I'm very I'm, thankful you wrote this I'm book. I'm very optimistic and mm -hmm. thank you so much. You're welcome.